And thank you for joining us for another live episode of Conversations with Michael. And a warm welcome to all of you. We're, of course, live streaming from our own home studio here in the beautiful Willamette Valley of Oregon. And we're going to do it today a little different in that we're going to honor the theme for today's session by eliminating the green screen in the background here. Because today's session is titled, Making It Real. We know that most of you that are watching this episode, you're here today because you want some more clarity as that relates to the world at large and all the problems that indeed face this planet. And as well, how you can help to influence some much needed wisdom, some much needed change in your own personal life as that relates to your own health and well-being and how your light serves as the biggest influencer on this planet. So we come together every month to help support an emerging new reality. One that must first start with all of us during the most profound and intense shift this planet has ever experienced. And you're feeling it, right? Of course you are. And a part that we enjoy playing, at least as that relates to an embodied human soul experience, allows my own soul and oversoul, called Michael, or for some of you, you know him as Mikael, to openly share his own unique perspective. And for those of you that are new to Ancient Wings, I don't do any of this by calling this a channeled message. I don't close my eyes or change the sound of my voice or start to contort my body. I simply allow who I also am to share what we believe to be the new norm as the natural expression of a human soul experience. And of course, we invite all of you to do the same. Oh, I know if it was that simple, all of you would be doing it. But what you'll discover, if you haven't already, it's actually much harder to disown your own presence, to disown that part of us that was set free by the original self, God. Just look at the world around us. The family of humanity became addicted to playing a very old game. It's called, let's pretend we're not the original self. We're not God too. Inside of that game, guilt, shame, and fear, they became the new norm. Some profit from it and some don't. In that game, you trade your natural state for a lot of underlying doubts, worries, and concerns. But if you've been following our work over all these years, you also know that this human game is but a reflection of the same game being played out in the non-physical realms. So thank you, all of you, for once again, sharing your unique presence here today, for having the courage to step outside of that game so as to experience something new, but very ancient, very sacred, that is filled with a renewed passion and joy. Let's take a deep breath here together. As I once again allow Michael to step forward. Indeed, indeed it is I, Michael. Thank you, Robert, for your willingness to step aside 
because that in and of itself does help to make all of this real. The willingness from your human self to step back, to let go of trying to manage, trying to control your life. Most of you that are here today, soul to soul, we are not strangers. In other lifetimes, in service to the Archangel Michael, many of you called yourself a spiritual warrior, carrying your light proudly with a sword in your hand, in defense of what appeared to be fighting against such a light. Some of you also know me while playing the role of Chambra, what we consider to be the most irreverent group of beings anywhere. You take great pride in not playing follow the leader. So for Chambra, it's very humbling to find yourself following the guidance, the perception of your human self. So today we're going to address that very issue in service to your freedom and the freedom that my partner chose in this lifetime was to simply call himself a creator. Even though most of his friends belong to one of those two groups, and as we look at the world around you, it's truly rare to find a human being that is freely expressing themselves as a soul being. Oh, it doesn't have to be verbal. It can be as subtle as that spark in your eyes or just enjoying a quiet moment while listening to the song of a bird. Nature seems to stimulate a memory from deep inside of you, allowing you to feel in those quiet moments your own divine nature. All of you that are here today have or want that same freedom. So what is keeping you from taking complete ownership of your soul's presence? Well, if it's not outside of you, it must be inside. And it is our joy and passion to help you to acknowledge the state of your own inner reality. So the role that we have encouraged so many of you to play offers some much needed support for all the problems humanity is currently facing and to those that are indeed actively involved with helping to restore a more sustainable reality. But for that to become real, you need more than just changes on this planet. Oh, that's been an ongoing theme for a very long time. Helping to make the world a better place. And how is that going? Indeed, how is it going? Should it really be taking this long? Has your patience run out? Indeed, it has. And so you are here at this time. At this time. To be of service. To something new. So our approach to all of this is a little different. We are suggesting that you'll need a complete reset to the current way of being human for the changes you desire to become real. And the guidance that can support such a choice cannot be found inside the collective consciousness of this human family. But if you feel inspired by the energy of your own light, there are millions of human beings who are open to such an idea. 
who would be willing to serve such a radical change. So you're true, reliable, and consistent support will dramatically shift in this lifetime from perceiving that it exists outside of you to now allowing it from within, from your own soul and its oversoul. The guidance from this part of you will help you to reconnect with your own divine nature. Not divine in terms of some kind of perfection. It's divine because it always allowing itself to experience what is known and unknown, but without any agenda. Its presence allows you to sense a willingness to expand beyond what you know in this moment. So your divine nature allows you to literally rise above all the turmoil, all the emotional conflicts, by doing what? Of course, by being on this planet, but not of it. So as to be able to share a quality of light, a state of consciousness that for the longest time has been missing from this world. But Earth is not the only place in creation where this very light appears to have vanished, disappeared. And if you're new to our work, welcome. If our approach to reclaiming your divinity truly speaks to your heart, well, we are honored to be of service. And as each of you begin to ascend from a state of consciousness that denies the existence of your own divinity by accepting and loving yourself as you have never loved before, your devotion to resetting your inner reality back to its natural state as I speak, is having a profound impact on this planet. One that has been prophesized for eons. Look around you, but with the eyes of your soul, what do you see? What do you see? You see, my friends, all of us, on and off of this planet are also experiencing this shift that not only offers an individual experience of a more elevated state of being, ascending into a natural state of being you, but a collective one as well, that takes this entire planet into a more elevated state I, Michael, am on record for stating that during the next two decades, this represents the time for such a transition. Within these next 20 to 25 years, I am very confident that millions of human beings will choose to return to their natural state. Not because I'm psychic, I am not. It is solely based on the quality of light that so many of you are now sharing, which will in turn dramatically shift your current reality. But this shift that speaks to your heart is not for everyone. Not every being, human or otherwise, embraces a reality that relies on mutual respect, cooperation, and embraces diversity as representing an improved experience on and off of this planet? Not everyone 
is willing to or even wants to let go of all the drama that's created from playing power games. So this current version of Earth, it will continue to support or make itself available for those that enjoy playing those power games. But that doesn't keep any of you from embracing a more elevated version of this planet. We know all too well that you are sick and tired of spending so much of your own time and energy cleaning up the mess left behind from those that enjoy playing these games. We share your sentiment. You're no longer willing to settle for tolerating the current circumstances. You want more than that. And as that relates to global affairs, the family of humanity, more than ever before, is also demanding in their own unique way, no more games, no more wars. And the good news, the support for such a vision has always existed inside of you. But you also discovered from looking within, there are parts of your own identity, human and otherwise, that just don't feel compatible with your own divinity. Let's take a breath there. As a human being, you've all discovered doubt, worry, and concern just don't dance well with the natural state of your own consciousness. So we have encouraged you to let them go, to let your soul transmute those energies for your human self. And because so many of you have done just that, you're now experiencing life in a way that at times feels to your human self to be surreal. Your human experience is beginning to feel quasi-physical. Or put another way, you can feel that you're still here on this planet, but not of it. It doesn't feel so dense. And as that relates to your extended human family, they too are being invited to now make a conscious choice to free themselves from what was never theirs to carry. There is no deadline to making such a choice, but there exists right now in this moment an incredible opportunity. An opportunity that all of you can feel. It feels ripe, does it not? To experience your divine nature as a human a human being in this lifetime while being on this planet and simply because so many of you have now chosen that for yourself, it can feel like an emerging spiritual revolution is taking place. And its impact on the status quo Will be, pro will be profound as long as your light has no agenda. But changing what has been to what it now needs to be in order to bring all of life back into some kind of balance, it can be awkward. It can be challenging and a little frightening. But what's even more disturbing than any of that 
is not the change at all. Some of you here today have experienced that in your own life. In fact, it was that experience that inspired you to take that deep dive inside of your own inner reality. With this group that is here today, I act as a guide with a very light touch. You don't need me to play the role of a commander. We believe, like so many of you, that the vast majority of human beings are actually heart-centered. And from a political perspective, the majority of people are neither far left or far right. They prefer the middle ground. But it, it is the far right and the far left that ends up making all the noise. So it can feel that your own voice has little impact on the affairs of other people. But that isn't true. We can't say it enough. So we'll say it again. If there really were any other beings in all of creation, that were more qualified to be here at this time, they would be here. So what makes all of you so different? Well, my friends, you know in your heart, you are more than all the conditioning you inherited. You are more than all those expectations you tried your best to fulfill. And you will never be fully satisfied until your own freedom becomes tangible, becomes real. Not so much from the outside. All of you have tried that. So this inner journey does indeed make you pretty unique in what all of you discovered from such an exploration didn't always fill you with love and light, did it? But it did enhance your awareness of who you also are. It represents a part of our own cosmic story, one that began long before this earth was ever created. So indeed, we come together every month and within all of our classes and workshops to act as supports to each other by sharing our energy. And of course, if it's your energy and only your energy that you too are sharing, you're not only experiencing something truly profound. For a lot of you, for the first time, you're experiencing freedom true freedom and its impact on others, just look at the world around you. What do you think has stimulated so much change in such a short period of time? You see, my friends, your light without the agenda has brought the age of the warrior to an end. And of course, those that are playing the warrior are pushing back, are fighting back. Let's take another deep breath there. Because it's not really good news for so many that support their life from doing battle. In the next century, the family of humanity will look back at this current time and they will see it for what it is, in some ways barbaric, but as well filled with so much light. It is your light that is and will continue 
to inspire so many beings, human and otherwise, to apply it to their own unique circumstances. And for those of you that want to go a little deeper, it is our honor to be of service through the teachings of Michael in Ancient Wings. Is it really possible? Is it really possible to free all of those conflicted emotions? Is it possible to free all the noise inside your head? We know it sounds too good to be true. And because it might appear that way, too good to be true, there are others that have jumped on the bandwagon to promote their own agenda in the name of guilt and shame. So as we tune into the energy of all of those that are watching this session, whether, whether it is now in this moment or 20 years from now, it's almost like you've lived two lives. One that for the most part had you feeling less than who you knew you were. A magnificent soul who is having a human experience. The other life has been all about reclaiming that presence, allowing your own magnificence to now step forward. But that's not so easy when you've relied on your human self and its identity for so long. So we understand your dilemma. It's really awkward to allow such a major shift in yourself when you allow your soul to now sit in the driver's seat. It tends to make you look emotionally unstable. So our approach to all of this is actually really simple. We encourage you to first clean up your act, meaning stop extracting energies from outside of your own. We know that is very different it's not very popular from what most people do, but for the most part, they are not even aware that they're doing it. And because of the lack of awareness, their personal experience begins and has expanded into what, well, into also needing to extract and consume natural resources from this planet as their only means of supporting themselves. But over the years, many of you became conscious of how your soul supports itself with its own energy. So for most of you here today, we've come a long ways as it relates to cleaning up your act. Today, cutting cords has made its way into a lot of different teachings, but it's still got a long ways to go before it becomes the new standard on this planet, which honors the sovereignty of all beings. And then we shifted our teaching from cleaning up your act to the art of allowing, which is very different from pushing or forcing things to happen. The art of allowing retired that warrior spirit. And that too is not so easy to let go of. It's not something most of you were taught in school, but if you were, your abundance issues wouldn't exist. So the art of allowing brings up some personal issues that relate to feeling safe, feeling vulnerable. And if you look at the world around you, it doesn't look very safe, does it?
In fact, when has it ever felt safe for the majority of human beings? But allowing also triggers all those deservability issues. And we know who we can thank for that. Not feeling worthy to perceive or to receive the presence of your soul. To love yourself in such a way that you don't need to be loved back in order to feel complete. Hmm. That is still a work in progress for most of you. <clears throat> because it's so new, not only here on earth, but within all of creation. Such a love can't really be managed. It can't be controlled which has a lot of very intelligent beings shaking in their knees. So our joy is to help anyone learn to manifest what speaks to your heart, to literally create your own reality. And the evidence that such a thing is even possible is reflected back to you in the quality of your own life. That sounds really good, right? There are a lot of workshops out there offering to help you become the creator of your own experience. But speaking from Robert's own experience, this is not a concept. It really does work. But, and yes, here we go again, another but, for that to become real, it's back to acknowledging those other parts of you that indeed do interfere with that experience. Parts of you that feel that life can just happen to you at any moment. These parts can point to the world around all of you as a living example of what not to trust. The whole concept that we create our own reality can sound like a lot more new age bullshit. So we get it. It took Robert years to be so clear and honest about his own inner reality. So all of you carry a variety of unresolved conflicted emotions. And those very emotions end up attracting to you exactly what you don't want to experience. The solution is either to shut down or go into denial or begin to acknowledge those parts of you that feel victimized by life itself and then to share a quality of love that is unknown to most. You call it acceptance. Accept those parts just as they are and finally turn them over to your soul. <clears throat> to help transform the energies <clears throat> that help to create the victim role. They're not dark. They're not evil. They're just very conflicted. So it wasn't until Robert finally allowed my presence to be present that his life started to truly change big time. It helped to release all the guilt and shame he'd been carrying for years. And this is where we find a lot of you. But you're not so sure, are you? If the trade-off is worth the price, 
Because if you're truly going to allow your soul to be this present, allow it to have the freedom to express itself, allow it to speak without calling it channeling, your human self does indeed pay a price. Because your soul is indeed more willing to coexist, more than willing to coexist inside of a human soul relationship. But what part of your humanity are you offering to your soul? What part of your humanity are you offering to your soul? The part that supports itself from feeling conflicted? Not sure who it really is? Or the part of you that embraces being the creator of your own experience? It's a part of your human identity that you created, that emerged during your awakening process. For the first time, you started to trust the human creator identity more than the conflicted human. That is also the part, the human creator, that your soul is attracted to. You've heard others state that you can't take your garbage with you on this road to your enlightenment. But of course, your human self translat, translates that to mean it needs to get its act together if it wants to coexist with your soul. But that, my friends, is not what is being offered here. We're not asking any of you to try to create an impure, improved version of your human self. And we know that can be a little confusing because there are a lot of very well-known institutions that support themselves promoting just that. Your human self will try in vain to improve itself. But what it's really doing is trying in vain to preserve its own identity when it faces the presence of your soul. Did you hear that? It's trying to preserve its own identity when it faces the presence of your soul. So when we suggest that your human self really only has but one job to do, allow, that's it. Just allow the presence of your soul to now be present if indeed you want to truly experience a more elevated life, an enlightened state of consciousness, your own divinity incarnate. But most people respond to that very invitation by saying, no, thank you. Why? Because the light of your soul will indeed begin to transmute all of those conflicted emotions, patterns of behavior, relieving your human self of what it complains so much about, its own pain and suffering. So what's the problem with that? Why does that end up becoming a problem? Well, it's those very issues that help to support your human's identity. So to your human self, this sounds like your soul is offering eternal relief, but that very relief 
also relieves that part of your human nature from being human too. And it would be right. Let's take another deep breath. I invite you to feel into all the energies that might be surfacing right now as we talk. Your conflicted human identity, if it truly wants to be relieved of all of its pain, it will lose the very identity that supports the pain from relying for the most part on receiving sympathy from others. It creates a feeding pattern that denies you the freedom to be in your natural state to now being a victim. So, my friends, with the title of today's message, Making It Real, Is the Price Too High? Would you rather continue to identify with parts of you that are filled with doubt, worry, and concern as being your true self? Or do you really want your freedom by reclaiming your natural state, which knows that all is indeed well? The choice, of course, is yours. But to your conditioned human nature, that's a bitter pill to swallow. It really thought that this human-soul relationship would allow it to continue just as it is. The part that's playing the role of a creator, that part knows it can't do it by itself. That part knows it must rely on the presence of your soul to make this real. This part of you knows it is in service to what your soul wants to experience. It's not the other way around. And this too is where we find a lot of you. You keep going back and forth. One moment, you're all about surrendering to your soul, especially if your physical health and well-being could use a little reinforcement, or maybe you're lacking a little money in your life. You get really excited about the prospect of coexisting with your soul, and then some days, then there are some days, where your human self feels abandoned by your soul. So it creates a little drama, maybe even creates a pity party for itself. So we are here today to remind all of you, your human part is not the part of you that incarnated into this physical reality. That was your soul. It is gladly offering its service to all of you for free to help relieve your human experience of all of its worries and concerns. But the price your human part will pay might just be too high because it is those worries and concerns that help to define its own identity. Are we clear about that? We've been talking about this for years, maybe not as direct as we are doing right now, but the opportunity that now lies in front of all of you is so grand, so incredible, it demands of us to be this direct. So as we bring today's session to a close, thank you once again for sharing your light. You no longer need to suffer from feeling so alone. And we get it. 
it's a hard thing to trust. So together, let's take another deep breath. All is indeed well, my friends. At least it is inside the heart of your soul. Until next time, be well.